In this short video we're going to look at the use of gas jars and deflagrating spoons, that's burning spoons. It's typical that teachers demonstrate the burning of magnesium and the burning of sulfur in oxygen. So once you have your gas jar of oxygen filled, typically with a, a gas jar lid, although we didn't have one to hand here, we have to make do with a large watch glass, that gas jar lid can be greased to make a bit more airtight, particularly for longer term storage of oxygen by the technical staff prior to the teacher demonstration. A couple of notes to think about when using a burning spoon, a deflagrating spoon. The lid slides up and down the shaft of the spoon and that is invariably held in place with a cork which has dried out. You're going to need to think of a way of fixing the lid of the deflagrating spoon at the right height. We use a couple of pieces of blue tack here. If you're going to use the same gas jars all the time, I suppose a drop of super glue wouldn't hurt. However, work out where the spoon of the deflagrating spoon should be in the middle of the gas jar in advance. Load your material into the spoon. If it's uh, magnesium, I tend to use magnesium ribbon and just tie it in a loose knot around the end so that it drops down vertically. The problems you have with magnesium burning are twofold. One, the bright light that's given off, you're not supposed to look directly at it. That's a challenge when you have to put this stuff into the gas jar. And secondly, you don't want the spoon or the magnesium ribbon when it's a light coming into contact with the side of the gas jar because as you'll see in this demonstration where we use a uh, too small a gas jar, it, uh, it cracked because of the heat produced uh, on combustion. The black coloration that you may see is a reaction between the hot magnesium and the silica in the glass. Whether you're using sulfur or magnesium, you need to get the reaction started. So you're gonna need a Bunsen flame nearby with magnesium or sulfur get them starting to burn in air and then quickly transfer them into the gas jar. With a deflagrating spoon there's never a perfect fit so you will get some evolution of sulfur dioxide being given off to the glass. Watch out for your asthmatics and as you can see in this demonstration we've added a bit of universal indicator in water into the gas jar. We didn't even have to shake it up to show you that the sulfur dioxide fumes were acidic. The magnesium oxide residue can be tipped out and examined and looked for its basic properties.